I'm so happy to see y'all. What's up, YouTube? What's going on? I'm so happy to see y'all. I'm so happy to be with y'all tonight. Listen, I got a whole pad load of stuff. Have a little questions. Open up my window because it's going to be hot. Um, I'm going to be trying to interface as much as I can with Facebook users. I tried to set up live. Y'all know I'm not all that technical. I'm not even going to start disclaiming. I'm just going <laughs> to go on in and get as many questions. I tried to get as many questions as I could um, from the beginning. But it's so, so much misinformation going around. I mean, I think that contributes to our anxiety. Um, thank you, Rodney Rollins. He's going to be moderating for us tonight. Appreciate your presence. Um, I want to just say I know everybody is going through a lot. Um, nothing that I say is here to minimize what anybody is feeling and are experiencing. Your perception is your reality. Um, people are losing their jobs every day. Um, I know people who have lost friends. Um, I have friends that are in the ICU. Um, this is affecting all of us. This is hitting all of us. Um, some of us, uh, maybe not so personally yet, um, but in some way and in some fashion, this has affected all of us. Um, so it, I think it's important for us to have the right information. Um, so you, you guys know I'm home, so you're bound to hear my dogs go in and out. So bear with me. Um, hi, Carlos. Thank you. Um, Jelly Bee, Australia in the house. Hey, Australia. What's up, Cozy TV? We got New Jersey in the house. Welcome, all of you. Welcome, welcome. Um, I also put the link on Facebook, so I hope some of the Facebook folks will come in as well. All right, let's get right to it. Um, there uh, is the Stafford Act, uh, which was the first question that I saw going around, whether or not the Stafford, Act, the Stafford Act gave the president the authority to enact martial law. It does not. The Stafford Act does not. The Stafford Act is uh, nothing more than an act that allows for the release of funds. All right, the that forty or I think they said fifty billion um, dollars that would be managed by FEMA um, is authorized by the Stafford Act. That's about that's about money. Um, can the uh, can the president suspend the election? Okay, the the truth, yes, yeah, the truth, yeah, it it, it can happen. Um, and in these times, I can't even say that it's unlikely because we're in such uncertain times where we're experiencing things, things we have never experienced before. Now, remember, up until the 22nd Amendment of the United States Constitution, which was enacted in 1951 or ratified in 51, but I think it was uh, 47 when it was introduced after FDR, that's when the two term presidential limit. Um, came into effect. That's when it came into effect. Um, so it's not necessarily something that would be foreign for us to have a president that sat for more than two terms. Like I said, FDR sat for four terms, right? Remember, he went through the Depression and some of World War II. Yeah. Um, so it's not the Stafford Act, but if the president does enact martial law, and he can, he does have the authority to do that. Um, the The United States Constitution says that the writ of habeas corpus um, shall not be suspended, except right. There's always an exception clause, just like I, you know, and I tell my students that every every answer in the law, uh, the answer starts with it depends. The answer starts with it depends. Um, because there, there are no hard and fast rules. Everything bends to one thing or another. And so while the Constitution says that the writ of habeas corpus should not be suspended, um, there's an exception, um, except in times of national emergency or national security. And once he enacted the national, th that we were in a national emergency, then that sort of puts us in the state and in that position where he can, where he can issue an executive order like Cuomo did, um, like Cuomo did for New York, 
which basically says stay stay in the house. You have to stay in the house except for what we deem are essential services. I'm trying to look at the chats. Y'all know I'm terrible with this, but I am paying attention to the chats as well. Okay. Um, so New York, California, Oregon, um, Illinois doesn't have a strict as as in a strict policy. I believe they have a stay in place order, which is a little less restrictive than what we have here in New York, which is basically in place until April 20th, unless it is extended. Now, one of the questions I got was, Ike, how long do you think this is going to be? How, how long do you think we're going to be um, shut in, quarantined, sheltered in place? A long time. Um, here are some of the indicators. Um, we've been told that this virus won't reach its peak until April. I mean, until May, right? Early May. Um, so that's another month, at least, right? At least. Um, we have been told that we are going to be receiving help from the federal government because, um, as you know, they just uh, enacted, uh, activated, I should say, the National Guard. Um, under Article 32, and we're going to talk about that, which is a good thing um, um, to help out. But the, they are sending us a hospital ship. One is going to um, California for the West Coast, and one is coming to New York for the East Coast. It's so very strategic, right? East Coast, West Coast, um, and these ships are thousand hospital bed um, ships going to the most populated parts of the country. Message, y'all better be paying attention. It's not It's not a coincidence that the most populated states have been shut down first. Uh-oh, don't start nothing, don't start nothing, I won't be nothing. All right. <laughs> The National Guard was called up in New York and in other states under Article 32. There are three ways the National Guard can be enacted. Obviously, the governor can enact it, but when that happens, that the state has to pay for the National Guard's participation in whatever um, it's called up to do. And the National Guard can be called up to do a myriad of things. Um, Article 2, if it's called up under the Article 2 or activated under Article 2, um, then the federal government would control its movement and it'd be like assigned a federal officer or, or military person to uh, answer to. Um, and then the federal government would be the ones who would pay for their for their services. Um, Article 32, which is what uh, the President Trump used to enact the National Guard, um, preserves the right of the governor of the state in which the, the Guard is activated to control the Guard while at the same time having the federal government pay. So we're sort of having like the best of both worlds when it comes to the National Guard being activated. Um, I'm trying to pay attention to my text messages too, because sometimes people are telling me, are you missing this question? And you missing that question? I'm gonna come back to the chats and see if questions I'm missing. Hey, here's on Dr. Ali Muhammad's latest video in regard to setting up tribal government. First of all, if you say doctor to me with, the words that follow Ali Muhammad, we can't have a conversation. Okay. If you want to say Mr. Because all of his credentials are suspect to me. But we're not gonna um we're not gonna get into that. <laughs> all right, part of the executive order uh, that was enacted by uh, Cuomo has suggested I it does it's not really a hard language order to banks uh, to issue forbearance and forgiveness for mortgages. Um, that also applies to credit cards, uh, interest rates, and things of that nature. Now, what, ha what, what is mortgage forgiveness? What does that mean? Does that mean that the bank is going to say to you, you don't have to pay three the next three months mortgage? You're, we're going to forgive that. That's likely not what's going to happen. What's likely going to happen is the mortgage company is going to say, you don't have to pay three months mortgage. And then we're going to tack those three months on to the end of your mortgage. Okay. So if your mortgage was a 30 year, it's going to be 30 years and three more months. Cause those three months that you were forgiven weren't really actually forgiven. They were sort of just 
forgotten till later. You follow? Yeah, that's how that works. Um, but you know, in the in the immediate time, it does help. It does help that you don't have to carry that expense. Um, at this time, especially if you're like me and you have kids that are now home eating every fucking thing that moves. God damn it. Do you think that the supermarkets are full because people are panicking? They're not full because people are panicking. They're full because our kids are eating us out of house and home. Okay. Out, just, just, it's just, it's just all day. Like, come on, man. Hi, right, sorry, that, that's just me, because I'm going to go broke just from that alone. Um, okay, can you be arrested if you're violating a stay, uh, the stay in order? Um, okay, uh, yes, <laughs> in New York, let me just say New York, you know, I'm a New York lawyer, and uh, jurisdictionally, my, my, my license stops at New York, um, so I can't tell you what will happen, but I know that the governor has said here, that if you are caught violating um, these provisions, you know, businesses, you're open past, I think, 8 p.m. or um, something to that effect, that the police are authorized to arrest you. What could they arrest you for? Um, well, more likely than not, they will, they'll probably arrest you for OGA, which is obstructing governmental administration. Um, but prosecutors can be pretty uh creative when they want to be. So that, that that's probably one, which is not serious crime or anything, but you know, it's gonna gonna probably lead you to be annoyed and resist resist arrest. So that's probably gonna start out as an OGA and then that's gonna escalate to a resisting because you're gonna be like, are oh, y'all really arresting me? And they're gonna be like, yeah. Um okay. I work with CX Transportation. We all received our letter exemption from travel exemption from travel letter. Is that like being laid off? Okay, because I'm going to talk about that as well. Um, I'm not sure if that's what that if that means. <laughs> Lady T, we I'm hungry too. I, I'm on water. I'm on air and water. <laughs> um. Some of these rules apply to most of the most of the places that have these stay in orders, New York, California, uh, Oregon. And like I said, uh, Illinois is slightly different, but um, they have one there as well. Um, OK. Uh, the stimulus package. <laughs> Do you think the stimulus package is going to help? Um, OK, so first. First, they have to agree on what the appropriate relief would be, and and that seems to be part of the problem. You have a package from the House, and you have a package from the Senate, and they're very different. Um, and even in their differences, I don't think that either of them is designed to really, really help the average American person. Um, most of these packages are do designed to help the businesses that are most affected with the theory that helping businesses trickle down, trickles down to the employee and will help the average American. Um, and so some of the concern with the stimulus package is that um, corporations will be given money and they will use that money to buy back their own stocks. And then once they buy back their own stocks, they will then resell their stocks and make a profit. Yeah. So, you know, uh, Trump's, Trump actually came out and said that he was against stock, um, buybacks, stock buybacks from corporations who received this money. Um, and, and he said something like, I, I'm a Republican, but I don't agree with that. <laughs> Which I, for the first time, I was like, oh, shit, <laughs> we really are in the bizarro world. OK, um, Coronavirus um, testing. How is it that Rand Paul got a test when he is not showing any symptoms and said he had not been around anyone who had either recently been diagnosed or uh, recently self quarantined? Well, do I really need to answer that? I mean, the truth is, is that there is priority in this country when it comes to health care. There always has been. Um, and hopefully, maybe after this, they won't be. I don't know. 
but um, there is priority in healthcare amongst the elites, the one percent, and our entertainers and our actors and actresses, right? Because you've seen the litany of those people who have been tested, whether they show symptoms or not. Idris Elba said he didn't have any symptoms, um, but he was tested. Uh, so, you know, that's that. Um, one thing that I do want to draw your attention to is a little statute called 42. Where is it? It's a beautiful little statute that... Uh, 42 U.S.C. 264, 42 U.S.C. 264, and I don't know how to screenshot, so I'm just going to read it to y'all. Um, I don't know how to screen share. You can Google it or it'll come up. It's free. You, 42 U.S. Code Section 264 is the regulation to control communicable diseases, right? And this basically gives the Surgeon General, the Surgeon General, with the approval of the Secretary of State and a whole other, a lot of other people, gives the Surgeon General the approval to basically enact martial law. You read that. Gives the Surgeon General. It said, I, I, what time is it? Because right, I said I was going to be off here by 8.30. So. Um, the Surgeon General, with the approval of the Secretary, is author, it's not the Secretary of State, it was... Secretary of State is authorized to make and enforce such regulations as is his judgment. You did you see who the Secretary of I mean the uh, Surgeon? You saw that guy, right? That was the one who said Trump was healthier than him. This guy, his judgment necessary to prevent the introduction, transmission, or spread of communicable disease from foreign countries into the states or possessions, or from one state or possession into another state or possession. For purposes of carrying out and enforcing such regulations, the Surgeon General may provide for such inspection, fumigation, disinfection, sanitation, pest extermination, and destruction of animals or articles found to be so infected or contaminated as to be sources of dangerous infection to human beings or other such measures as in his judgment may be necessary. B, apprehension, detention, or conditional release of individuals. Regulations prescribed under this section shall not provide for the apprehension, detention, or conditional release of individuals except, remember I told you about those motherfucking exception clauses, except for the purpose of preventing the introduction, transmission, or spreads of such communicable diseases as may be specified from time to time in executive orders of the president upon the recommendation of the secretary in consultation with the sec with the Surgeon General. And that goes on and on to the application of that to foreign persons and to persons believe, reasonably believed to be infected and what types of regulations can be put onto them. Yeah. Yeah. So the government has wide, wide latitude in what it can do in times like this wide latitude. And so, yes, the answer to a lot of the, the most frightening questions um, are, yes, it can come to that. It can come to martial law. It can come to suspending the writ of habeas corpus. It can come to suspending the constitution. It can, we've already uh, seen elections be canceled. Now you, they're primary elections, but they are primary presidential elections. How do we have a presidential election built on an electoral college that's built on what the states are doing in their particular state uh, voting apparatus? How do we? How are we going to have that? We're going to say, well, you know, well, you, you, you during the coronavirus, you only get to have your primary, so we're just going to figure it out. We'll just whatever elector, we, we'll do whatever we want to do with your electoral votes, right? Talk about voter suppression. And would you, and then, and then the question becomes as a country, do we want to have, move forward with an election that might not count everyone, where everyone might not have a voice, you know, more, more so than usual? <laughs> um, or, or do we want to wait? Or do we want to wait? Um, during times like this, uh, this country has made, made uh, some, some awful, decisions, awful decisions. Um, and I will point to Japanese internment camps during World War II, um, in which this country looked at their own American citizens as foreigners, 
and jail and not, jail them, jail them, put them in in, in, in camps. Um, and yeah, they got reparations, but the horror, the horror um, of something like that happening. We, you know, we cannot forget our past. Our past is prologue. We must remember. And oftentimes, I think this country suffers from the great forgetting. We cannot forget, especially when we have a president who is walking around saying the Chinese virus. I mean that that sets up for the Chinese internment camps. Is that what is that what the setup is for? Right? Um, okay, a couple more things. The Defense Production Act. The Defense Production Act again has nothing to do with martial law. The Defense Production Act, which the president did enact, but is very reluctant to really use, um, basically tells companies that they have to prioritize their manufacturing and production for that which this country needs now. So whatever you make, put that shit to the side because we need some masks, we need ventilators, we need scrubs, we need robes, we need gowns, we need, we need, we need stuff. We need sanitizers, we need all of this stuff, right? And so that's what the Defense Production Act does. It doesn't have anything to do with martial law. Again, it basically just requires that companies in this country prioritize their manufacturing and production to the needs of the moment. A couple more things. Compassionate release. A couple of states are releasing those inmates who are most susceptible to the coronavirus. Those that are over 60, those that have compromised um, immune systems, um, and those who are maybe have less time left or in are nonviolent, things of that nature. So a number of places are doing that. I don't know if Harvey Weinstein is going to uh, be one of those people, but if I had to guess, yeah, yes, he'll probably be one of the people that's released as it was reported very recently that he, uh, today, that he tested positive for the coronavirus. And so he may be one of those people um, and the, the release could be temporary, right? The release doesn't, it doesn't mean that they're releasing him and foregoing his 23 year sentence. It could be that he is temporarily furloughed until the panic and epidemic is clear, you know, or is over. Um, all right, let me take a break from my notes and come over here. And then I'm gonna address that Polit well, that Rolling Stone stupid article from the DOJ in the secret request. All right, let me see. He was leading tomorrow. I think we probably, I think the country might be headed to national lockdown. I do think that. Um, they're going to rock the virus shit till the wheels fall off. Yeah. Oh, well, so here's what I want to say. It's not the virus, right? Obviously, it's not the virus. So many of us, I know I'll tell you, I have felt sick in the past since December. Um, and how many of us don't now like feel a little something in your throat? You like, uh, uh. <laughs> let me go do that steam with the orange peel. <laughs> Listen, you know what? I do anything, take my oregano oil or whatnot. But it's not so much about the virus or um, or whether or not you'll you'll survive the virus. Most people will. Here's the problem, and I put I took a couple of numbers down. New York, and I can, all, again, I'm going to tell you about New York. You can get the numbers on your state, but New York, you know, we we have 15,000 cases in New York right now. I want to say in the United States, we're, all, we're at 32,000, almost 33,000 cases. New York alone, the state alone has half of the, the virus, the half of the cases of coronavirus in the country. Okay. New York alone, 15,000. Now, we are headed for a calamity because we don't have the capacity to deal with the people who will be sick, right? So it might not be you, but it, it might not be you who's sick over the coronavirus. But what if you got hit by a car? There's no capacity for you to be treated at the hospital. Now, I'm not saying that's what the state is now, but that's what the fear is that will be that will be the case in two weeks or so, right? Um, it is predicted that at its peak, and I said that would be early May, that the virus would require 
somewhere between 100 and 110,000 hospital beds. Let me say that one more time. Just make it nice number, 100,000 hospital beds. You know how many hospital beds they have in New York? 5,000. 5,000 hospital beds and 3,000 ICU beds. That's 8,000. Let's just, let's say I'm off, a fi- let's say I'm off a whole 10,000. Let's say we got 20,000. Let's, let's, let's say it's 20,000 beds in this state and we need 100,000. You think about that for a minute. That 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 is going to cause in this next question the prioritizing of healthcare and what they're 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 doing the moral dilemma that is brought upon doctors when they have to decide who gets this one ventilator. Who out of these two individuals gets this ventilator and then it becomes a quality of life question. Well, who's older? Who's more healthy? Maybe who has more money? Maybe who has more status? Maybe who's black? Who's white? Right? With all of these factors and these 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 factors that we can't control as a people will be brought on by this virus. These moral questions that have to be dealt with in the span of a moment. A doctor playing God has to decide who gets a ventilator. That is what needs to be avoided. That is the problem. That's the problem. Uh, what else I got in here? Oh, let me talk about this DOJ article. So there's an article going around talking about the DOJ um, on behalf of the White House and the Attorney General Barr secretly asked Congress, I guess, I, I guess secretly asked Congress for um, to pass some legislation uh, that would pretty much mar- mirror martial law. Um, thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. No, no amount is too small. I so appreciate the super chat. Um, so the DOG's request basically, um, it, it was, see, and this is what the, the media does. The media tries to stoke your fears, provoke your anxieties um, by twisting and turning truths. Most of the things that the DOJ talked about or that the article talked about already is in place. Um, One of the things they said was to allow judges to suspend hearings and things of this nature um, in the event of emergency. Judges already can do that. Um, They said that they wanted to uh, have some, some, some say in it so that this suspension or whatever the judges do could be more uniform, whatever. They wanted to allow for video conferencing for defendants that were in custody without their consent because the statute before required that if an an incarcerated individual had to appear on video conference, he could only do so upon his consent. Well, one of the things we all understand as Americans is that when we are in a state of heightened security, our freedoms go down, down, down. It's It's this balance. You wanna be more secure, you give up your more freedom. Right? You want to be more free? Anarchy. You give up security. That's the balance. Um, so judges already have the authority to suspend uh, proceedings. They wanted an extension of this, uh, the statute of limitations. That's good. That's a good thing. Statute of limitations on criminal uh, cases and on civil proceedings. Listen, I don't want it to be that I can't sue if I have a viable civil action. Um, I don't want, I want, I don't want to be that I can't sue because we were locked down in the pandemic for a year. Right. So, so what we told it, told the statute of limitations. So that's not unreasonable, but the way they write it makes it sound like it's oh, they're, 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 they 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 want to be able to, <laughs> it's just like, I like, come on. Um, immigrants who test positive, for the coronavirus are not qualified for asylum. It doesn't say that once they recover that they can't then qualify for asylum, right? We gotta take it to the next 
to the next thing, right? It doesn't just stop with what, what we say. We, our analysis has to continue to the end. Okay, let's see. Uh, how I, I answered the how long do I think it will last? Uh, all right, let me see. Why won't they show the number of people or say the number who have been cured by Corona? They do. You just have to look for it. There is a site. There's one site called Corona.help. There's a site called Corona.help. It tells you all of the positive tests. It tells you all of the people who have died. It gives you an account of the people who have recovered. Uh, it gives you a mortality rate. It gives you a breakdown state by state. Um, and in every state, it gives you the infection number, the number of people who have died, and the number of people who have recovered. That's corona.help, corona.help. And if you can, donate to that site as well, because those of us who are trying to keep you guys informed, we ain't getting paid either. <laughs> well, not, that's not true. I'm not getting paid as an attorney because the courts are closed. Um, I'm not picking up any cases on a state. There ain't nobody out committing any crimes. Ain't nobody getting falsely arrested because everybody's in the house. Um, so, I'm, I'm, you know, that's one stream of income that's been closed off. But as you know, I also am a college professor. So um, thankfully, um, we have transitioned to online teaching. Um, so I am still receiving um, that salary. Uh, and, you know, I used to laugh at it. <laughs> now I'm just like, when we get paid. <laughs> Times is hard. You heard. Um, so let's see. Stock market. Um, what are my favorite stocks? What am I watching? What am I doing? Okay. So one of the things about the stock market, I, this, this is not advice. Let me disclaim. I am not a broker, trader. I don't have a security license. I none of that. Okay. Um, so you take what I say with a grain of salt. Um, but so uh, so the stock market has uh, crashed to its pre-Trump levels, which <laughs> which I know is pissing him off more than anything. But um, OK, it's 832. I, I'm, I'm two minutes over. But I want to tell you all what I say about the stock market. Um, it has seemed that as the coronavirus numbers go up, the stock market numbers are going down. And so I expect that maybe, maybe that when the coronavirus hits its peak, maybe that's where we will call the, the bottom, right? What we call the, um, the stock market calls the bottom, meaning that that's when it's going to pretty much stop dropping and it'll start to rebound and recover. Um, but, you know, one of the mantras of the stock market is, is you never know where the bottom is. You never know where the bottom is. Um, and that is the truth. And so be careful, be careful um, with purchasing. First, don't spend money that you cannot afford to lose. I, I've said that on my videos when it came to investing with uh, certain people on the Internet. Do not invest money that you cannot stand to lose. OK, um, start small. Start with companies that you're familiar with and do your research. Look at the charts. They're not crazy. You can look at a chart and tell how the stock has moved for the entire year. Look at its 52-week high. Look at the 52-week low. And if it's at its 52-week low or lower, mm, you might want to look into that one, watch that one, and see you know, if the growth opportunity is worth you buying, right? Because if it's a stock like you know, Pepsi or I just I bought Ford at like $2. Um, and somebody's like, don't buy four. It's just dropping. It's just dropping. I'm like, okay, it's just two dollars. I'm it's not like I'm buying millions of shares. So I bought a, you know, a few shares of Ford. Um, and then it went up because Ford said, hey, we'll make some shit for you. <laughs> what what y'all need? Some some ventilators. We we could make those. Um, and then it went up and then it went down. And then, you know, and so some of those things you have to watch, right? You have to watch the market moves with the way that the economy is moving right now. Right. So restaurants are closing. Those stocks are going down. Starbucks going down. Um, the airline stocks plummeting. Delta, JetBlue. JetBlue is like seven dollars a share. Um, the, the the airline, the, the not airline, the cruise lines, uh, Carnival down. All of these stocks. These are stocks that people stocks is 
<laughs> These are stocks that people are now watching heavily so that when the bottom is in, they can get in there and get those stocks back because those industries tend to rebound very well, right? And if you can get in low and you get you a nice amount of shares, like I think Carnival, if you get a hundred or more shares, you get priority booking or some shit. I think it's Carnival, not sure, double check. Don't quote me, disclaimer, disclaimer. Um, so uh, you can use, I'm, I use Robinhood. My, there's a link on my Facebook page. I, I'll put a link on here because if you use my link, you get a free stock and I get a free stock too. Um, and so that's always nice. Because sometimes they introduce you to stocks you're not even familiar with. And you're like, oh, let me look into this one. All right now. I might have to get me a couple more shares of that. Thank you, Fred. I oh, appreciate you, Fred. Thank you so much, love. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate all of you. Um, and I especially appreciate those of you who reach into your pocket and appreciate me. All right, 835. Um, let me see. Let me go through my notes and make sure I hit everything. Um, oh, vaccines. Vaccines and treatment for the virus. I think that's the last thing I'm going to talk about. Prevention, vaccine, and the treatment. Um, okay, so there is no vaccine, and vaccines take a, a tremendous amount of time before they are ready to be used on the public um, in any mass way. Um, so I would caution um, against anyone into thinking or, or setting their um, hopes on there being a vaccine anytime soon, um, 18 months out maybe, right? Because they have to have trials and whatnot and wait for reactions from people. Right, and that, that takes time. And I'm not in the, uh, listen, given the history of this government, um, I'm really not a fan of being a guinea pig of theirs. Thank you. No, you're not about to find out how this melanin reacts to that bullshit. No. No, 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 um, and I know he listened to them in Fox News because I will happen to be watching. I watched I watched um, Tucker Carlson, Hannity, and then I watched um, the woman, uh, forget her name, Laura Ingram. And on that particular night, they were talking about this malaria drug, uh, hydroquinine, or I don't know how to say it. I'm not even going to play around. Anyway, but it's the malaria drug. And Trump had, had misspoken at one of his... Um, one of his pressers basically saying that the drug was being fast tracked through the FDA, blah, blah, blah. When the drug has been here since 1930, 1940. So none of that was true. Um, the problem with that is that the drug has not been widely tested, right? And it hasn't been peer reviewed when it comes to its treatment of the coronavirus. Um, it's been some cases in France, um, but they're basically saying that the sample that was used is so small that you can't say that it could replicate in, in a larger setting, right? And so that's part of the problem. Um, thank you, Nappy Yankee, I appreciate you. Speaking of decisions, what of the homeless? Yes, um, I, I will talk to you about the homeless. The, the, always the last, the last uh, you know, of the people that pay attention. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you, Jacqueline, I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, I'll talk about the homeless, but see, this is why I can't get distracted. Y'all know I got ADD. I got ADHD. Um, okay. So the treatment, it hasn't been proven to be effective on a wide scale. Um, and that's why the numbers of people dying still going up. I mean, was it not just yesterday when Italy reported it? I want to say it's largest, uh, single death toll in us uh, since this started out. And it was somewhere in the 400 people range in one day. Um, and we've known they've had subsequent um, large uh, mass death or die offs, so to speak, from 200 in one day. And then a couple of days later, another 200 and a couple of days later, 250. And then a couple of days later, 350 and now 400. So there obviously um, is no effective treatment right now. Um, despite what Someone might tell you, even if that someone is the president. Um, prevention. 
I think, um, you know, most of you know that I'm a spiritualist and I am about vibration and energy. And I think if you keep your, vibra your, your vibrational frequency up, that is your best armor. That is your best armor. Um, and how do you do that? You have to move on a frequency of love. You have to move on a frequency of love, which is the opposite of the frequency of fear. Right? You thought I was going to say with the opposite of hate. Love is not the opposite of hate. Fear is the opposite of love. Right? And so if you are operating on the on the frequency of fear, you will lower your immune system. You absolutely will. And this disease, they don't know enough about it. They don't know enough about its mutating abilities. It was first thought not to be airborne. And now it is thought to be airborne. There is more than one strain. There's an L strain and an S strain. And we don't know what other um, mutating capabilities this virus has, right? And so don't operate on the frequency of fear, um, but be informed, be informed. Um, Oh, two more things. Then I'm going to talk about the homeless. I promise I won't forget. I'm sorry. I meant, I, okay. I, okay. I know I said 30 minutes. God damn it. It's a lot. If you get if you get arrested in New York, <laughs> you are going to be there for some time. Okay. Right now, um, everything in New York is suspended. Arraignments are still going on. However, um, with the social distancing in place, everything is taking a very long time. Right now, from what I understand, most of the arraignments are being done by video, at least with, in Queens. This, this is information that I'm, I'm, I'm getting from um, some of the attorneys that are working arraignments in Queens. Um, Queens arraignments, if you've ever been there, it's a very small courtroom. Um, it's only one courtroom, and it's, it's not very spacious, nor it's in the basement, and so there is no air in there. Um, and so the attorney is there, and the court officers, and the judge. And it's crowded in the courtroom and the defendant is on a video conference. He's or she is the safest person in this whole entire process. Um, but it might take longer uh, for you to get through arraignments. Um, so stay your ass off the street. That's all I got to say about that. Don't call me because I'm not coming to nobody's little tight ass courtroom. I ain't doing it. I'm not, not, I'm not doing it. I'm just not going to do it. As far as the homeless. Okay. So you know what? The homeless. They're not doing anything for the homeless. I ain't going to even lie. I mean, I've seen pictures of homeless still sleeping on the trains and the subways. Um, they're still sitting outside of um, the pizza shop up the block. Um, I don't know what to say about that. I really don't. Um, they are the people that this society thinks of the least. Um, and they probably are some of the most vulnerable people to this disease. Um, you know, and it's sort of a, you know, sort of a survival of the fittest sort of attitude um, for a lot of people in this country. Um, people who didn't have the compassion for others who were fleeing from war-torn country, but are fucking stabbing each other for some goddamn paper towels, something crazy like that. It's crazy. Um, all right. So I do want to do, I did want to do one other thing because um, what are essential businesses? Okay businesses. This is New York. Um, so I don't think it's a lot different. Um, but keep in mind that this is New York's executive order. All right. Essential. And they, they break down the essential businesses into different categories. Right. Um, can you guys see me when I do that? When I leave out? I don't know. I can't tell if y'all can still see me while I'm going to read something. Maybe I can pull it up on my phone just in case I'm, I'm going out. Money white status. What yeah, that's what did that the selection for who gets to live and who gets to die? Because that's quite possible. All right. Um you know what I have it on my phone. I do I do what music is really good during this time. Anybody who knows me knows that music soothes my savage beast. Essential health care uh, healthcare operation. These are the businesses that are allowed to stay open. They are exempt from the governor's from the governor's um, executive order. 
requiring businesses to close and shut down. All right, these are the um, entities that are deemed essential that are uh, exempt. Research and lab services, hospitals, walk-in care health facilities, emergency veterinarian livestock services, elder care, medical wholesale and distribution, home health care workers. If you're a home health care worker, you are, you are exempt um, from the shutdown. Um, or AIDS for the elderly. Obviously, doctors in uh, emergency, emergency dental, emergency dental. Okay, that does not include your routine dental uh, visit. That does not include your your fill your cleaning. All right, emergency dental is essential. Not your you just floss and brush well <laughs> until this shit is over. Yeah. Um. Nursing homes and residential health care facilities, they get to stay open. Um, medical supplies and equipment manufacturers and providers, they get to stay open. These are the essential infrastructure. Utility, including power generate and fuel supply and transmission. Thank you for that, right? Public water, telecommunications, uh, data centers. Still, the airports and airlines are open, okay? They are still open. Transportation um infrastructure, buses, the rails for higher vehicles, garages. Hotels are still open. Hotels and places of accommodation are still open. So with respect to the homeless, one of the things um, that I have heard um, be suggested is to, to allow um, for some of the hotels that um, are going to be hurt during the course of this to um, be like SROs, uh, single uh, residency occupant type uh, situations to allow for the homeless. But you know, that only accounts for those homeless people that are amenable to staying inside or staying indoors or staying in structured housing. Some homeless people are homeless by choice. Now, that is not the same as saying some people are sl were slaves by choice, so please don't come for me. There are some people who are homeless who rather um, than be a part of the system um, they'd rather be homeless. So I know because I've spoken to I've spoken to a few of them. So you can't, there's nothing, you cannot, you can't fight me on that, right? You just can't. Um, essential manufacturing, food processing, manufacturing agents, including all food and beverages, chemicals, medical equipment, pharmaceuticals, sanitary products, so the garbage, the trash will still um, be taken out. Was <laughs> one of the things my mother was like. You think the trash? You think they still gonna take out the trash? I was like, I sure hope so, because that would just compound things, right? Um, telecommunications. Uh, that means that your cable company can still come out, um, service your your. You know, if you're having issues with your Wi-Fi, and you still can have that stuff service. Microelectronics and semiconductors, agriculture, farms. Um, household paper products. So we shouldn't have any sh shortages on those because the manufacturing of all of those uh, is, is deemed essential and should still be happening. Essential retail, this is your life. Essential retail. Grocery stores, you get to stay open. Thank God, including food and beverage stores, pharmacies, convenience stores. That's the little store, the mom and pop stores. I think they get to stay open, the convenience stores. Um, farmers markets, gas stations, Restaurants and bars can stay open only for takeout delivery and New York have list, has lifted the ban. You could get your liquor taken out. Yeah. When this wasn't happening, you could not take liquor out of an establishment. Okay. Now you could order it and, and get it to go. Why am I smiling so hard about that? <laughs> I don't even drink like that. I don't know why. I just, I just like the thought of not having to steal my bottle of liquor outside. <laughs> All right. Essential services, trash and recycling, uh, mail and shipping services, laundromats, laundromats, still open, building, cleaning and maintenance, child care services. And mostly when I when I saw that, I was like, child care services, there's nobody working. But a lot of first responders are working. A lot of nurses are working. A lot of police officers and um, and they have children and their children need child care because the schools are out. Um, so child care services are exempt. Auto repair. Auto, the auto repair shop is open and popping. I'm not mad at that, though, because when you think about it, you can't really, if I'm a first responder, I can't really help you if my cause, you know, it's not working. 
uh, warehouse to distribution and fulfillment. My son just got a job at a warehouse around the corner because they are overflowing, especially with trying to keep supermarkets full. Um, not just because people are buying like crazy, but again, like I said, people are eating like crazy in their home all day. Uh, what else is it? Uh, is uh, exempt. Funeral homes, crematoriums, and cemeteries, they are exempt. They do not have to shut down. Now, everything that I'm saying that doesn't have to shut down still has to abide by the social distancing requirements that you stay six feet apart from uh, other people, all right? Um, still, then still wash your hands and still, you know, careful touching surfaces and things of that nature. Uh, storage, storage for essential businesses and animal shelters are also uh, except the news media is exempt. Um, financial institutions are exempt. Sorry, that's my dog. They are bugging. Banks, insurance, payroll, accounting, and services related to the financial market, those are all exempt. All right. Um, the homeless shelters are exempt, obviously. They're not prohibited. They don't get they don't they don't have to close. They still have they are still in the position to help. Um, homeless people, but again, they have to follow um, the, the the provisions that are in place for social dis dis distancing. Food banks are still open. Human services are still open. Construction, skills trade, electricians, plumbers, um, they're still, uh, they are essential. They have been deemed essential. Um, this is uh, uh, the obvious law enforcement, fire prevention response, building code enforcement, security, emerging emergency management, builders, building cleaners and janitors. Essential. And a lot of these people are are people who make uh, minimum wage, you know, minimum wage that they don't earn a living wage. These are the people that this government has fought to not pay. And now they are essential. This shit is crazy. Automotive repair and disinfection. Um, and so the, the, the whole list is there, but those are some of the more important ones. So you get an idea of what, what it means when you hear that term essential. Um, and so, yeah, garbage man, plumber, water. <laughs> right, we could figure the rest of this shit out. <laughs> Who would know if they died or sick? I missed the question. Wait, did you hear them getting sick or dying from the so-called virus transfer the plane? Okay, so I'm not sure if I missed some of the question. I probably did. I was trying to scroll up. I have heard of um, a couple of people that I know um, who have lost friends. Um, the the gentleman who was the corrections uh, investigator was a friend to two of, of my friends um, who don't know each other, who both reached out to say that they were devastated um, by the loss of this man and how great a person he was. Um, so, yeah. Um, I also know someone from my neighborhood, Dave Edwards, who is in, last I heard, ICU um, and fighting the coronavirus, um, who I know as Poop. Poopy, we called him Poopy. Those of you who know Dave Edwards, he's a legend in 40 Projects. Um, he went to Georgetown for a little while, uh, played with Alonzo Mourning. Um, you know, he was a, he was a, a hood celebrity, uh, for lack of a better term, and and one of my really good friends. So, um, you know, I'm really rooting for y'all. Ask y'all to say, um, send him some healing energy, please, um, as you speak his name. So, 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 Poop, get up, man, because get your ass up. Um, so, yeah, it's real for a lot of us. It's real for a lot of us. Um, and um, I hope it, it's never real for you. I hope it's not because it's, it's, it's scary um, and it's painful um, and it causes a great deal of anxiety. Um, but like I said, keep your energy up um, and stay hydrated. Let me drink some water. Come on. Did I answer everything? Let me go down. Actually, I do trust my doctor. I don't think she would be down with the vaccination, though. She, she would be like, listen, they got vaccination, but we're not really getting that out yet. So, uh, uh, all right. I think I covered everything. Um, I'm going to try to come on more often because I'm home. <laughs> I'm home um, and bring you some decent content. Um, and try to dispel some myths. You guys can hit me up on Facebook. Um, if you got questions, you know, put it on my page. 
That way I'll see it. And, you know, I'll do my best to try to answer whatever I didn't answer this time. I'll answer uh, in the next in the next go round. All right, family. Thank you for joining me tonight. Um, you guys stay safe. Practice your social distancing. Keep your energy up. Keep your vibration up. Develop a routine. Right. If you're like me in your home, you know, it gets easy to just not want to get up, not you know, not want to do anything. Develop a routine. Get up in the morning. Um, I get up in the morning. I give my my thanks to my ancestors at my altar. Um, I try to stretch and move my body a little bit because um, I need sun and, I, and there's just not enough sun. So I haven't been outside to run and, you know, really, really be active. Um, so but, I'm, you know, you got to do something. You got to move. Um, and um, we're we'll, we'll, we going we gonna to be all right. We're going to be all right. Right. We are resilient people. And we have seen more. We have seen more than this. All right. All right. Ike Speaks. I love you. I really do. Subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell. Share. Thank you. Y'all have a good night. Peace.